Tonight we are here at the Waldorf Astoria, Orlando, and tonight is Josh's birthday, so we're having sort of a little birthday surprise. He doesn't know all that's happening. The Waldorf and I planned this together, <laughs> and it's very exciting because Josh knows little to none of what's happening tonight. So we're actually starting tonight here at Peacock Alley. This is their lobby bar and their menu is super cool. It's on like these little iPads. And for my drink, this magnificent blue wonder here, it's actually called the Peacock. It has Bombay Sapphire, Lavender Syrup, Blue Sirago, and Fresh Lemonade. The drink is actually up inside this little ice sphere here. And it's delicious. It's nice and fruity. The lemonade gives it a nice little bit of citrus and acidity. And I mean, it's blue, so it's pretty awesome. So you might notice that I have a jacket on. Very rare to ever wear one, but I guess tonight called for it. So uh, at Peacock Alley, I've got the Air Drink, or the Air, it's spelled A-I-R-E. And uh, it has Kettle One Botanicals, which is cucumber and mint, maraschino, lemon juice, pure cane sugar, and mint leaves. This is, um, I could have gotten a mojito to drink. Obviously they would have made that for me, but this is a, a little bit of a different twist but it's still very, very good. The uh, the Kettle One Botanical is such a fantastic vodka. It's amazing. I know it's not very manly, but <laughs> it tastes fantastic. Join me back here. Uh, geez, sure. I guess so. I'll teach you how to make a cocktail. Uh, well, welcome to Josh's birthday cocktail hour. Uh, we're gonna start by making a cocktail today called the South Side. Uh, there are many stories behind the South Side, and I'll give you my two favorites because neither of them has been completely confirmed. Uh, the first one is that back in the age of Al Capone, uh, Al Capone really, really liked mojitos, and he would travel down to you know Havana, have a mojito all the time. Back where you know rum was very popular uh, before it made its way officially to the states in cocktail bars, uh, and so being that rum wasn't too common to find in bars up north, when he got to the south side of Chicago, he had it made with gin, which is comparable, uh, and so he decided to call it the South Side because, of course, he ran the South Side of Chicago. The other rumor about it is that <laughs> there was a club called the South Side in New York City, and there was an inn that lots of people would travel right from the Kentucky Derby up north to go right before the holidays, of course, uh, and they would enjoy a cocktail uh, called a mint julep, which is traditionally made with whiskey, some mint, and some simple syrup with lime. Um, and it's interesting because they would travel up there and then during the prohibition, they decided to put a halt on that because of course liquor wasn't available. But there was one bar called the South Side, this one club per se, uh, a gentleman's club that claimed to have something similar and because they had this gin that was called bathtub gin back then, commonly referred to as bathtub tub gin because it wasn't made in a bathtub, but the bottles they would fill to make the gin complete uh, were tall enough that they couldn't be filled in the sink rather than in a bathtub. Uh, so it's really neat because this drink essentially was made to cover up the flavor of the gin that was not so good because it was kind of created as a bootleg awesome. type deal. So, <laughs> two behind this cocktail. So what we're gonna start with is we're gonna start with an ounce of this fresh key lime juice, cause it's Florida. So we make all of our own juices and syrups, fresh squeezed, fresh juiced. Oh, wow. And this right here is a simple syrup made of fresh cane sugar and agave. Uh, it's also made with a little bit of uh, vanilla, uh, Madagascar vanilla. This right here is gonna be one of my favorite gins. I'm a whiskey guy, but for gin, this is a barrel aged gin called Waterloo. It's distilled in Texas. And so it's actually barrel aged in second use whiskey barrels. Really, really neat. After that, this is a delicious Venezuelan rum, and uh, the rum is called Diplomatico Exclusiva. It's going to be more on that, you know, barrel-aged, dark flavor type deal. Take some mint, 
And with mint, a lot of common misconception about mojitos and drinks like that is that you have to muddle the mint. With mint, there's veins in the actual leaves, and if you do muddle them, what it's gonna do is break out all those sour, sort of bitter flavors within the leaf itself. So the only thing that you wanna do with this is just give it a smack or pat it against your wrist because that sort of opens up the veins. Okay. So I'll give you an option on that. You can smack it against your wrist a few times or you can actually smack it like this. You get to slap the mint. Slap, slap the, the mint. mint. Yeah, I'll just do this. Yeah, brand okay. spanking new, love it. Yeah. <laughs> and you stick it in the cocktail. Huh? And this one we have to shake vigorously, so we're going to take some ice, throw it in that cocktail, huh? make sure it's nice and full to the top. Excellent. Now we're going to cover it up with a shaker. And this is where we get such great forearms as bartenders. So make sure you're shaking vigorously, <laughs> yeah, holding on to both no? ends. Up and down. Up and down, back and forth. You got this. It's all in the hips. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I think, be a, work. I think it'd be a terrible part. That was perfect. You did great. Sure. Oh, I'll yeah. give it a smack to release that air pressure. And for this one, because it's got citrus in it, we add a little bit of crushed ice. It's going to help subdue that harsh flavor that you might get from some lime. But pack it in there nice and tight. And we're going to strain this and double strain it because when you double strain it, it takes all those unwanted particles and undesired little uh, specks of everything out of the cocktail. So when it fills up perfectly like this, as it melts, it's gonna get a little bit taller, but we have just enough room to stuff some fresh mint in there. Now, what we're gonna do is grab some fresh mint out of here, and because we like an aromatic flavor, and when someone goes ahead and grabs the mint or the cocktail, they'll get it all over. Give this a little smack right against the wrist. And then we also kind of garnish the glassware itself. That way, when it's on someone's fingers and they can smell, the, the flavor kind of goes into every profile. Stick that in there like that. And then we actually dehydrate all our own fruit here. So a little dehydrated lime wedge that we do in our dehydrator. Oh, wow. Stick that on top. And because it's your birthday, I'm going to add an extra little flair to this as well. Don't try this at home. <laughs> this is a little fresh French, French absinthe on top. Oh, wow. oh boy. So put this in here like such. Oh, boy. Make a wish. Blow it out. Enjoy the drink. Oh, wow. Awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> they grab you a straw. <laughs> it's like super smooth, like smooth, like no like crazy alcohol flavor in there. It's amazing. So good. I could drink these all night. Maybe I will. <laughs> We are eating at the Bolton Bear restaurant here at Waldorf Astoria. This is a restaurant that has superb reviews. Um, we've been wanting to come here for a really long time, and tonight is complimentary of Bolton Bear and Waldorf Astoria. So, uh, full disclosure for you guys, but we are super excited for it. Um, I don't think really service or food or anything is going to be different, and I am super excited for it. Our server Alex who came out and explained the menu to us uh, was excellent, went into great detail, uh, made sure that we knew what we were getting and part of it is they're going to bring out uh, quite a few things for us to try so it's going to be a ton of food. Um, we still get to get a nice entree. Believe it or not Taylor's going to get steak, I'm probably going to get fish and it's going to be amazing. So the one really nice thing about the menu here is that it's actually on an iPad. So even whenever it does get a little bit darker in here, once the sun goes down, you can still see the menu very well. And you can scroll through and you can actually tap on items on the menu and it will pop up a picture so you can actually see exactly what you're getting. So this is really nice. So our amazing bartender who uh, helped me make a mojito has been bringing us more drinks. He brought me an old fashioned. I've never had an old fashioned before. But this is made a little bit differently. It's made with rum. So it's supposed to be a little bit more on the sweeter side. Because I've always kind of stayed away from old fashions just because they're like really, uh, they're hot from, from the alcohol. It's got like this nice cherry in it. And I think the best part about it is, is that it has a sphere. It's not an ice cube. It's an ice sphere. 
which is really cool. He's right. There's definitely no um, like heat that you would get from like whiskey or bourbon, I think, because it's made with the rum, and it is really good. Yeah, Cameron here at the bar, fantastic, knows what he's doing, and these are phenomenal. All I can really remember is that this is like a blackberry bramble, so I'm gonna let Cameron tell you a little bit about what this actually is. It actually features the Bombay Sapphire Dry Gin, uh, as well as a little bit of what's called Bulls Geneva. Geneva is actually the very first form of what gin was when it was created. Right. Okay. And it's really cool because Geneva means Dutch courage. Yeah, Dutch courage became liquid courage, and that's kind of what this cocktail is based on. It's something that if you go to London during the summer, it's something very common. But anyway, this drink is delicious. I don't yeah. like gin, I don't like whiskey, I don't like anything like that. I like rum and basically vodka in any of my drinks and this does have gin in it but the way it's mixed is delicious you really get that blackberry flavor in there and you do still get the gin flavor but it's not too overpowering that for somebody that it doesn't like a gin to be able to drink it we have an excellent mixologist tonight and now it's time to start trying food because they just brought out the bread for us here we've got a traditional sourdough a rosemary brioche fig and walnut baguette and then rosemary focaccia. I am starting off with this beautiful looking thyme and sea salt brioche. So mine and Josh's scales vary a little bit, but I would definitely call this butter a five. And it's a butter with a Vermont salt. And I think it's going to pair perfectly with this bread. The brioche is nice, light, airy. It's got that little flavor of salt in there and a little bit of thyme. Not overpowering at all, just the perfect amount to give you that little bit of flavor. It's delicious, super soft. Mm. Usually when you come to a restaurant, bread service is served in a basket and left at the table, but here they kind of do it more table side. Um, a server comes over and drops the bread off. So Taylor has hers. I've chosen a sourdough. This is a classic sourdough bread paired with the uh, same butter. It smells fantastic. I don't ever want to say that the bread service makes or breaks a restaurant, but this is really good. Sourdough is by far my favorite type of bread. It's really good. Butter uh, spreadability here. Let's be honest, okay? Five is reserved for with butter. This is not whipped. This is served from temperature, so it's nice and spreadable. So I'd give it a four. But uh, what really makes it is the Vermont salt. It adds that nice saltiness to the butter. I love it. One of the appetizers that we are getting to try is the pasta explosion, which is... There we go. It smells good. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Phenomenal. Uh, it's basically like a little ravioli. They serve it with Parmesan on top. And then what they do is they actually will grate the truffle over top of that. We do truffles on top of our pasta explosion for a little extra added effect. Would you mind if I did that for you? Yeah. And what they tell you is to um, use your spoon and just scoop all that up and try it all together. And it is an amazing combination of flavors. It is really like um, this little amazing flavorful explosion literally in your mouth. It is so good. And just to point out that the filling inside of those uh, little raviolis is a carbonara mousse, serrano ham, and uh, some like roasted tomatoes. If they said, would you like this as an entree? I would say yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it good. Let me just start by saying it's a very small like bite size like almost ravioli But there is so much flavor packed into that little thing with the parmesan on top and then just that little bit of truffle Oh my gosh I like want to wait five minutes before I eat the next one Just to like let this flavor wear off before I eat the, the other one It's excellent. The pasta is cooked perfectly that filling is just it's a tiny tiny bit of filling but there's just so much flavor in there it's so good and then there is actually like a little bit of a cream sauce on top as well the flavor combinations in there are just perfect we're gonna start off with a little bit of florida cell french sea salt here a bit of pelletary pepper to begin us this was sous vide for just a little bit just to get it slightly boiled i can easily remove all the egg whites and keep the egg yolk in the center. Egg whites don't really add a lot of flavor to anything, so mm -hmm. we just wanted to take those off and utilize the best part. Now we're gonna start using all of our ingredients here. We also have Dijon mustard. Instead of using raw anchovies, 
we understand that a lot of people don't like the fishiness that it brings, but we still want the saltiness from the anchovies, so we utilize the paste instead. And then last but certainly not least, we also have our Worcestershire sauce here. And then last but certainly not least, our olive oil. This is Primo olive oil, the finest olive oil that we could find here in Orlando. We have our romaine lettuce. We also have our focaccia croutons and our parmigiano. So we didn't mention this at the beginning, but one of the things that Bull and Bear is renowned for is their tableside preparation of food and their personalized service, which they've been very engaging with us and talking to us, having you know casual conversation. Um, they explain why they do the things they do the way they do it, which we have thoroughly enjoyed so far. And our first tableside preparation has been the Caesar salad. And I wish they did that more places because that was actually really fun to watch and be, you know, we were actually kind of learning and engaging with the server as he prepared it. He explained, you know, how they came up with Caesar salad and how it came to be. And it's just very interesting. And it looks delicious. So we're excited to eat this now very large portion of salad we have here. You can honestly tell that this dressing is homemade and was made right here at the table because they make the dressing up for you and then add all the salad and it has homemade croutons on top of some of their bread from here. Really good. So we start off with these two sides detached. It's going to be boiled in alkaline water for about 12 hours and then put it in an ice bath. That's going to bring out a lot of the natural flavors of the fried chicken. Afterwards, we wrap it all together and then sous vide it for about an hour and 15 minutes and at 71 degree temperature. That's going to make it very, very tender. As you can see, I was literally cutting butter. It's very delicious. When we prepare it for service, we're going to fry it twice. Once by itself, then a second time, we're going to pour it in buttermilk and cornflakes and then fry it once again. These are creamy mashed potatoes here. I'll be serving a little bit of that for you. So I'm about to try this fried chicken that looks so tender. It was almost like one swipe of my knife to cut this. As soon as he rolled it out on the cart, we could smell it. And another nice thing with this is that they prepare it table side as well. So it's already cooked. They bring it out with the mashed potatoes and gravy on the side. And this is actually an entree option. But tonight we're having it as one of our appetizers, like a second appetizer. They told us that a lot of guests do that here because they really want to have this fried chicken. But they still want to have something else as an entree. So they'll do this as like an appetizer to share amongst the table or amongst two people. This is actually the top two item sold here in the restaurant is this fried chicken. They slice it for you, put it on the plate, and then give each person some mashed potatoes and a little bit of that gravy on there. And it looks amazing. It's very juicy. A nice crunch on the outside from the cornflakes and the buttermilk. And I actually didn't even get any of that gravy in there, so I'm gonna have some mashed potatoes here. That gravy is really good. And these are their creamy mashed potatoes, and they're like super creamy mashed potatoes. So silky smooth, and that chicken is nice and tender and juicy on the inside. I don't even know how to describe the perfect piece of chicken, but that is phenomenal. It has this really nice crunchiness on the outside, nice and moist and tender on the inside. It is a perfect combination of texture. And then when you add in that gravy and mashed potatoes, this is amazing. I can understand why this is the number two seller on the menu. All right, so for my entree here, I chose to get a Dover sole fish, which is uh, served table side and they debone it. Here we're gonna debone the Dover sole. It's very good. If you don't know, a Dover sole is basically a flat fish. Um, there's a different kinds of them, but uh, it's really good. This uh, particular style is served over green beans, mushrooms, and asparagus. And then they drizzle over what's probably the best part is a lemon caper sauce over the fish and the green beans and it is really, really good. I have never had Dover sole fish before. Good fish, I would definitely come back and get again. I like that. It's also not on the actual menu, so whenever you come, they'll tell you they have some featured items that they don't put on the actual menu. Um, it is served for the most part all year round, but there are times where, um, since it's not necessarily local, they get it from a different provider, uh, they don't necessarily always have it on the menu. So if it is something that you might be interested in, just you're gonna have to ask. This is 
served entrees only. They do family style sides. So for our sides, we chose to get grilled asparagus and applewood smoked bacon mac and cheese, which is to die for. Unfortunately, we've had so much food to eat that we're probably gonna have to box most of our food and take it home. So this is not something that I knew was even common practice. Our server, Alex, took the bones of the Dover fish and gave them back to the chef and the chef actually deep fried them. What he said was what they do is that if you deep fry them, they'll actually like shatter and fall apart immediately if it's not a fresh fish. If it is fresh, the bones will stay whole and it fries together and you can actually eat the bones or like potato chips. They're definitely very crunchy. Another like little added information that isn't necessary, but I think just makes your meal overall that much better that they really try to give you as much as possible. For my entree, I got the 13 ounce Australian Wagyu strip loin. It is fantastic. It is cooked so perfectly that it literally almost melts in my mouth. I can tell that it is charred a little bit on the outside and I thought maybe that would almost make it like a little bit tough. I was completely wrong. It is so tender and so delicate. It's fantastic. I got it cooked medium and it's perfectly medium the whole way throughout the steak. I am so sad because I'm so full that I'm gonna have to take most of it home and eat it later. Oh, awesome. That's so cool. So this is our creme brulee here. So we do it a little bit differently. We actually pour a little bit of pickle oil on top. And that's what's going to caramelize the sugar on top. As soon as the fire goes out by itself, that means it's finally caramelized and you should be able to dig it. All the way on the bottom, you have a Verona dark chocolate layer, so make sure you dig all the way to the bottom. And over here, everything is locally re um, sourced. So Plant City right now, strawberries is in season. Yep. So that's where we get our strawberry from. The Chantilly is made to order. Uh, the meringue is dehydrated 24 hours. And then the strawberry jelly is made in house. So okay. ingredients on the ice cream, you have a vanilla oh, thank you so much. I really base, that. and for flavoring, the strawberry jelly. Mix those together. So for dessert tonight, we got to try two different desserts. We have a creme brulee, and then we have basically a strawberry shortcake, but is made with a sponge cake on the bottom and all of the fruit which is the strawberries is locally sourced from plant city and then they actually do table side ice cream so they make it right in front of you so it's really cool to watch it be made right there it's called a la fraise but it's basically like a strawberry shortcake it is so good probably my one of my favorite desserts that i've had i think a lot of you know that i'm not a huge dessert fan so uh, i think that's saying something and it's very fresh too which is really nice if you guys don't know, I'm not actually a huge cream brulee fan. Um, just don't like really consistency and texture of the dish normally, um, but I haven't really tried it yet. So remember how I said that I'm not a huge cream brulee fan? This one here is amazing. Maybe it's that I don't really like the vanilla standard creme brulee, but this one has this amazing mixture of chocolate in it, and it adds this whole nother level of flavor to it, and it is really good. Uh, this is actually the first time I think that I could ever say that I can eat an entire creme brulee and that's seriously 100% completely based off of the flavor of the dish uh, because again I'm not a huge like I don't like the consistency of it but it's just this combination of how they have put it together that makes it so good. So I have really enjoyed both of these desserts here. I really like the La Frise because it's very light and refreshing. You have the meringues on there, gives you a little bit of sweetness, along with the strawberry, gives you kind of like that natural sweetness. But I loved how that strawberry ice cream was prepared here at the table. Like I said, whenever we first got here with the salad, it's really fun to just watch them do it right here. And they're like really into it. They tell you about it, they explain everything. Plus, it tastes amazing. Then on the complete opposite end, you have the creme brulee, which is like a rich, sweet dessert. Creme brulee is like a custard with a sugar layer on top that they then caramelized. The creme brulee, like I said, has the custard in there. This to me doesn't have that like 
custard texture to me. This is a lot more creamy, and I think that might be why Josh likes it a little bit more. But the flavor is outstanding. It's got that vanilla, there's that little bit of extra chocolate that's down at the bottom that you typically don't get with a creme brulee. And the caramelization is perfect on the top. Whenever you tap the caramelized sugar, you should hear a nice crunch when you break through there, and it does that. What I can leave this as is any place can do an espresso martini. Uh -huh. I can do the chai latte martini. So if you had her like a like a vanilla chai latte. So I did absolute. I also did a little bit of St. Elizabeth allspice dram, and I finished it off with more of that Madagascar vanilla syrup, and then I dashed it with a little aromatic and Angostura bitters. Uh, I put some espresso in there, and then I shook the tar out of it. You really need to shake that to get it to have that foamy layer on top, mm -hmm. so the uh, espresso beans kind of graze the top That's like awesome. that. Thank that you. is awesome. Thank yes. you. Yes. Of course. Happy birthday. You were actually Thank asking you. about coffee, so. Cameron came through again, and normally at a dinner like this, I would love to have coffee with it. Just helps me to like, I don't know, think that it helps me digest and get through the rest of the dinner. But I think what is really great about it is just that you get that nice espresso coffee flavor that comes through. It is so good. This has been absolutely crazy. So let me just start off by saying thank you to Waldorf Astoria and Bull and & Bear and the amazing team that they have over here. Tonight was a great birthday celebration. Mm -hmm. uh, Taylor was, was working with them and planning <laughs> that, so I had no idea what was going on. And it was awesome. I had a great time. Even though that the, the food was complimentary, mm -hmm. I think it still goes without saying that the amazing team that they have, all the other tables that were seated around us were experiencing the exact same service. Mm -hmm. Very high quality yes. service, the food, the drinks, yes. everything was outstanding. And like Josh said, we know that this meal tonight that we had was complimentary. However, we are coming back <laughs> in July. We, so, we, yes, we, we do have an official <laughs> dining reservation. Yeah, if we didn't enjoy it, we wouldn't be coming back. Exactly. So we're really excited yes. for that because this was fantastic tonight. Yes. Everything. And, and, and that'll be an official dining review. Such a great time. I had a, a blast. He was smiling um, the whole yeah, entire time we were in there. Like the whole meal, everything. I was. And I don't usually smile that much, especially when I have to wear like... He doesn't like wearing dress clothes. A suit jacket. <laughs> of course I took it off, but I still, I had a blast. Mm -hmm. It was such a great time. Um, if you're staying here at Hilton Bonnet Creek or the Waldorf Astoria, if you don't know that they are connected, uh, we did a video back in July of Hilton Bonnet Creek, Orlando, so mm -hmm. you can check that out. But uh, if you're staying in either one, come down here and check them out. Uh, yes. Even if you don't want to sit down in the restaurant, they have a little lounge area and yep. at the bar. Um, Cameron, who is a awesome bartender, will make you something mm -hmm. that is amazing. Alex and Gustav took care of us in there and then along with everybody else on the serving team in the restaurant and then Luis the general manager came over and he prepared our one dessert for us everybody was just excellent it was it was it was it was an experience <laughs> it, was. it wasn't just dinner it was an experience it was. so it was. It was great. if you come here make sure you try as much food as you can and just like share mm -hmm. it amongst yourselves that yeah. way you can get a good variety the way we did tonight however yes. we are leaving super stuffed we are we're taking food <laughs> home with us <laughs> so let us know have you ever dined here at bowl and bear at waldorf astoria orlando